So we had what we thought was a great proof of the density theorem using this lemma, which is equivalent to the Archimedes principle. Um, but it turned out that what looks on the surface to be a pretty good proof has a pretty serious gap in its reasoning. Because when we look at how we constructed the rational, what we thought was a rational number r, that falls in the interval from x to y, where x and y are real numbers, we found out that even though using this lemma ended up giving us a 1 over n in between the interval from 0 to y minus x, which was rational, when we slide this interval back into its original position, x to y, by adding x to everything, we get a number r that is not necessarily a rational number. And that's a problem. That means that this proof as it stands is not a successful proof. It's not actually establishing that there exists an r in q between x and y. All that we've really established is that there exists a real number r in between x and y. Which is not a particularly interesting statement, um, because if that's all we cared about, we could just take x plus y divided by 2, the average of x and y, um, and we would have gotten a real number between x and y. So we've proven something, but we haven't proven what we set out to prove. So it turns out there's a pretty clever way to fix this problem, and it's going to require us introducing one more player onto the stage in this play. So I don't want to throw out our r altogether, even though we don't know if it's rational. What I want to do instead is I want to focus on this part of the interval, from x to x plus 1 over n. And let's take that part of the interval and transform it again, but this time we're going to transform it by multiplying all of its elements by n. And the nice part about that is that we know that n is a natural number. Right? So n is at least something that we know its arithmetic is pretty well behaved. So if I multiply that entire interval by n, I get a new interval, and the endpoints of that new interval are respectively nx, that's n times the left-hand endpoint of this one, and then nr. But remember, r is equal to x plus 1 over n, so I can rewrite that as n times x plus 1 over n. Or simplifying that out, I can write that as nx plus 1. And what's really cool about that is that this interval is an interval whose width, whose diameter, if you like, is exactly equal to 1, right? This only covers one unit of width on the real number line. And the great thing about that observation is that any interval of unit diameter on the real number line is going to have another integer, another whole number, uh, inside of that interval. And so we can conclude that there exists an integer, let's call it p, and that that integer p is in this interval from nx to nx plus 1. I'll call it an integer, although because n and x, uh, well, I guess we don't know if x is positive or negative. So I'm just going to call it positive, or I'm just going to call it a, an integer, rather. Uh, so that's as much as we know. So where does the magic come in? The magic comes in in taking this p and transporting it back into this part of the interval that we're actually interested in. And because it took us a multiplication by n to go from the interval on the left to the interval on the right, we'll just do a division by n to get us back. And so what we've just shown is that there exists a number p over n, which is in between x and r. Right? Meanwhile, what do we know about p over n? We knew that n was a natural number by lemma number 1. It gave us that natural number. We also know that p is an integer. Right? It belongs to the, the set of integers. And therefore, p divided by n is a ratio of one integer by another integer. n is in particular an integer as well. And therefore, p over n actually is a rational number. And that is the secret sauce that will help patch up our proof. So since this p over n is a rational number, by construction, it lies in between x and r. And r, because of lemma 1, lied between x and y. Therefore, this p over n lies between x and y, and p over n is rational. So we've completed our discovery. We've found that rational number. So now all we need to do is go back in and rewrite, in other words, re-communicate, uh, where this rational number comes from. So the way we'll do that is we'll take away this claim that r is a rational number because it's not necessarily true, right? But we're going to define r in the same way. r equals x plus 1 over n. And now all we have to do in this proof is introduce the reader to p. And we'll do that just by recalling how p was defined. p was an integer between nx and nx plus 1. 
And since there's only one such integer that will be in between nx and nx plus 1, we can just make that assertion the way that we introduce the reader to p. So we'll say, let p, an element of the integers, be the, and it's unique, which doesn't really matter that much to our proof, but we know that there is a uniqueness there, so we'll just say it. Um, so the unique integer in between nx and nx plus 1. All we have to do now is divide that inequality by n, which since n is positive, it preserves the sense of the inequality, which allows us to say that x is less than p over n, which is less than nx plus 1 over n, but nx plus 1 over n is exactly how we defined r. And we knew that r was less than y. So all we have to do to finish our proof is just replace this r with p over n. And remind the reader that this completes the proof because p over n is rational. And p over n belongs to q. And that completes the proof.